Yeah, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for each one of us in this room. Thank you for those that couldn't make it, oh God. Father God, I want to pray particularly for Stuart today. I lift him before you. I pray for complete uh, uh, refreshing and healing for that man in the name of Jesus. Well, Father God, we pray for everyone who is uh, struggling with anything at this moment in time. That you would reveal, oh God, that you would reveal, Father, to each one of us, your purposes, your uh, strategy for breaking out of, of the darkness, breaking out of the shadows, oh God, and coming into your wonderful light. And I pray, Father God, that Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you fill us with your presence, Holy Spirit? Would you fill us with your words, your thoughts, your uh, wisdom, oh God, as we look at the scriptures today? In the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to tell you what we're looking at. Uh, interested how dancing has been a little bit in our service. Uh, this morning, we, uh, we were worshipping and praising God. And, um, and we had the music on and, and we were dancing. Hallelujah. And it was like dancing. And it was dancing in the midst of our enemies. Yes. And it was almost like, you know, imagine, okay, imagine that there's a gang of guys or a gang of people, they're going to, they really hate you. And they're in a room and you've got to walk into that room and you walk in and fear's gone and you start dancing in the midst of it. Imagine that, that we can sing and we can dance in the midst of all our difficulties. We can dance because one day we'll be on the other side. We have an amazing place. An amazing God. So Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for each one of us. Amen. And so I'm thinking a little bit of dancing and a box. As I was sat there, uh, just go and get a box. Okay, I've got a box. How many of us put God in a box? We put God in our nice little boxes and we carry him under our arms wherever we go. And then we eat a problem. All oh, right, we'll get God out of the box. Lord, we have me, I need healing. Doctors couldn't do it. No, they couldn't. Back in the box. Right, thank you, Lord. Healed, sorted, back in the box on our merry way. With our box and God in the box. I don't know what size your box is, so matter. If you've got a box, keeping God in a box is no God. And that's what God really wants to speak to us, right? Don't keep me in a box. Yes. Yes. Don't keep me in a box. Because when we keep him in a box, we're trying to control God. Yeah. We're trying to bring him under our wishes, our thoughts, our plans, where it's actually God wants us to be in his plans. Yes, I know the plans that I have for you, amen. says God. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Hallelujah. Amen. And all them plans are fulfilled through Jesus Christ on the cross of our amazing Amazing Father God, that awesome sacrifice we sang about the blood, we sang about the presence, we sang that we can sing and dance and we can. Hallelujah. So we're going to have a look at 2 Samuel chapter 6 and um, we're going to do this together okay because this is as new to me as it's going to be to you. <laughs> we're going to see what the Holy Spirit breathes because we need the Holy Spirit to breathe life. Yes. Two, Samuel, two, 2 Samuel chapter 6 starts with this. David again brought together all the able young men of Israel. All of them. 30,000. That's a lot. 30,000. 30,000 young men of Israel. <clears throat> and he said, he and all his men, they went to Bela in Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God. You see, the, the Ark of God was a box. God was in the box. That's what they're thinking. Wherever the box went, God went. That's how they thought. So the, uh, and wherever the box was, wherever God was, uh, people prospered. Yes, Christ. People gained. Yeah. People, people benefited. And it said, so they, they want to bring up there the ark of God, which is called by the name, the name of the Lord Almighty, who is enthroned between the cherubim on the ark. The name of the, whole, the Lord Almighty. I don't really know a great deal about the ark of the, the God. I don't really know a great deal about the ark. Yeah. But I know it's a box. Yeah. I know it's a box. And I know that the Israelites, the people, and David, and all the 30,000 men, I know that they saw this box as, wow, this is our God. This is our God. We need to take him. We need to take him with it. So it says, so they said, they set the ark of God on a new cart. They did all that. They got a new cart. And they brought it from the house of Abinadab, 
which was on the hill, and Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, Abinadab were guiding the new cart. So, so uh, they knew the terrain. They knew the track that they were going on. They were guiding it. And the ark of God was on it. And it said, And Ahio was walking in front of it. And David and all Israel were celebrating with all their might before the Lord, with castanets, harps, lyres, timbrels, sistrums, and cymbals. They were dancing. They were celebrating. God is with us. This is our God. Remember, this was before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now we have got God in a box. We are the box. You are the box. God's in you. That's the change. God's in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is amazing, our God. And it said in verse 6, when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of God because the oxen stumbled. And listen to this, verse 7, the Lord's anger burned against Uzzah because of his irreverent act. Therefore, God struck him down and he died there before, beside the ark of God. You think, oh my goodness, Lord, what, why? Why? The guy's, on, the guy's thinking he's doing the right thing. Why would that happen? Why? Imagine the people, 30,000, stop. Everything would stop. They were dancing, singing, worshipping. Everything seems great. But they had their thoughts on where they would take their God and what their God would do. But God wanted to say, listen, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm your God. Yes. I'm God. Mm. I'm God. Trust me. Mm. Ask me. Yes. Ask me. Yes. What makes you think I want to go there? Ask me. And quite often, I don't know about you, but in the past, and maybe, maybe not so much today, I, I've thought to myself, you know, I, I'll set things up and I'll ask God to, to bless him. Get all my plans together. My plans. Yeah, 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 yeah. My plans. What I think. And Lord, would you bless all these plans? What do you do? And it's quite often in the past, it's not worked. Oh, God's not answering my prayer, is he? <laughs> God's not answering my prayer because that's not worked. Well, did I go to God in the beginning? Did I consult my God, Lord Almighty? We need to come before our God all the time, every day. God isn't in a box that we just get out. God lives in us. God's in us. The Holy Spirit is in me. And the Holy Spirit is in you. And God wants us to realise that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's the strength of Jesus Christ that lives in me that enables me to overcome and dance in my enemies, in the presence of my enemies. Said the Lord's anger burned and he died. And then he said in verse 8, he said, David was angry because the Lord's wrath had broken. You see, David didn't understand it. But God had done everything. <laughs> I got I even got a new cart. We painted it yellow. I've done everything. Got a big tight, big go faster stripes on me. Done everything. It's it's custom built for the ark of God. Everything. Done everything. What's going on? Why? Do you notice our anger? Anger rose up. And have you ever been angry when God's not answered your prayer? Yeah. Has it ever rose up in you? Anger rises up, doesn't it? Our God wants us to just take a breath. <laughs> Recognise that He lives in us. That we are full of His Spirit. And that He's for us, not against us. God wasn't against these people. He was for them. But He had to take them to a place. They needed to come to a point where actually, I'm not a God that you can control. You can't control me. Let me take all the boxes. Let me dot all the I's. Let me cross all the T's. Let me be the one. You don't need to do that. We set our plans. We do this, this. Okay, Lord, will you bless it? Now, I know in Proverbs uh, 16, it talks about laying our plans before the Lord and that he would cause them to prosper and succeed. Did you notice that verse? Laying our plans before the Lord. So not going ahead with our plans. We might have our plans. It's okay to plan, but then lay them before God. It's okay to have hopes and dreams and visions, but lay them before God. Don't go ahead until you've laid them before God. Yes. Don't go ahead yes. in your own strength because you'll burn out and it won't work. Yeah, right. And it won't work. 
Because David, in verse 9, he said, David was afraid now of the Lord. He was afraid. I think I would have been. I thought we'd done everything. He thought he'd done everything right. But something wasn't right. And God needed David to realise this. He said he was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, oh, how can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? God's against me. He thought God was against him because of this thing, because this happened. And sometimes we can think God doesn't care about me. Well, he doesn't listen to my prayers anyway. I've heard it so many times. People, I've heard people on the journey of faith and, and God has started working and, and, and they've been healed and they've been restored and they've been put in a good place. And then they just wander off. They wander off, go back to their old ways, go back to what's comfortable, go back to the familiar, go back to their addictions. They go back to whatever it is and they just forget God and then it just all goes, well, God doesn't care about me. We have to fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with the scriptures. Fall in love with the God who's in us. The Jesus that saves us. Amen? Fall in love with him. He said, how can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? And, and he said he wasn't even willing now to take the ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. He didn't, he didn't dare. He didn't, know what was, he, didn't, he didn't know what God was going to do next. You see, he was scared. He was scared. He had a fear. He, didn't, he, he, needed, to, he needed to cross over into a new realm of a different relationship with this God. Remember David was a king, a fighting man. The battle belongs to the Lord. Remember God, when David went out of the battle, David was the one that beat Goliath. Mm. <laughs> David was the one that beat the uh, lion and the bear when he was taking care of the sheep. This is David, so he knew this God. He knew this God, but he didn't know this God now. There's a new concept, a new... A new a new character that's revealing in this God for David. And, and, and he's a fighting man, but he's got to change his thinking a little. He's got to ch change his thinking. David was one that gave orders of the army. He'd tell his men to do this and they do it, he'd do this. And now it's almost like that was carrying in to his relationship with his God. This God that he has. You know, I, I, I'm quite interested. You know, we, I have a business, yeah, you know that. And... Uh, and being in charge of a business, you do have to tell people what to do. You have to ask them, tell them whichever way you want to do it. But in order to fulfil what you want, you've got to get those instructions across. And it carries a little bit of authority. And some years ago, and I learned this the hard way because you do. I'm talking about maybe 20 years ago. Uh, I can remember uh, some, asking somebody to do something and, and they're there with the chewing gum, chewing away. No, I'm doing that. Yeah. Anger rose up within me. I'm the boss. Yeah, yeah. I'm the boss. Yeah, yeah. You will do this. Who's paying your wages? Yeah. Well, they left. <laughs> and who'd blame them? Who'd blame them? And I had to realise uh, that there was a very a, a difficult thing that quite often in our lives, whatever, whatever part we play in lives, part of that characteristic that we require in order to work in, in the realm of the world and with people can sometimes wash over into our spirituality, into our relationship with God. Yes, that's right. And we have to realise right. that He's God. Yes. And He created all things. And this is our God. He said, the ark of the Lord, He remained at Obed-Edom, the Gittite, for three months. And listen to this, because the light was there, it said, the Lord blessed him. That's in verse 11. The yes. Lord blessed him and his entire household. So listen, it's not saying that when we don't have to be afraid of God, we have to respect God. We have to revere Him, worship Him, love Him, be encouraged by Him. And when His presence is in our lives, yeah. we will prosper. Mm. When God, who knows, just put your hand up, right? Put your hand up. If, when you invited Jesus Christ into your life, you started to follow God, everything absolutely went wrong and you never got blessed. <laughs> <laughs> When God comes in, things change, doesn't it? Sure. For the better, is that not right? Amen. Is that so? I'll tell you what I'm doing right. For all those on the video, I'm moving further back because <laughs> my head's chopped off. Hold on. My head's chopped off. My head's chopped off. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> you know, our God is an amazing God. Our God is an amazing God. I told you about times in India where when the presence of God came, I thought, oh my goodness, he's here. Yes. Such was the power of God. 
And it's a scary thing. I can't explain it, but it's a scary thing. And David was experiencing something like he was afraid. Like, oh no, this is a scary thing. This is it. And in verse 12, it said, Now King David was, was told that the Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and everything he has because of the ark of God. Now this, this helped David because up to this point, he's, think, he, he's he kind of fell out with God or he thinks God's fallen out with him and he doesn't know what to do. And he's thinking, you know, I mean, why would God, why would this guy die like that just because he was trying to stay think, Why would that happen? And then he, he realised, he's been told now, that because the ark of God is, uh, is with Obed-Edom and everything he has has started to prosper and started to be blessed, he's thinking, this is, a, this is my God's back. He's, he's back. He's thinking, hang on a minute. This is, this is God. This is God. He hasn't fallen out with us completely. He still loves us. He still cares. And he said, when those who were, then he says, so David went to bring up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom. He thinks, this is it. I can bring him to the city of David. And he went to bring it rejoicing. And in verse 13, it said, when those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, six steps, they stopped. They stopped. And they made a sacrifice, sacrificed a bull. They stopped. They sacrificed. They had a celebration. And they waited. And they waited. Dare we move again? Yeah, let's do it again. Okay, we'll do another six. One, two. Could you imagine? Because they really, really, really so wanted God to be with them. And they didn't want to preempt what God wanted to do. They wanted to get God out of the box that they'd put him in. They wanted to move. And so it says that, that they did, when those who were carrying the, the ark of the Lord, they take six steps, they sacrificed the bull and the fattened calf. And it said in verse 14, where in a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might. Hallelujah. With everything in him. Hallelujah. He was dancing before God. Why? Because he realized that God was with them. He realized that this amazing God is with them. Hallelujah. He saw something when he was at the when there was a, the household of Obed-Edom, he realised, he realised, it must have dawned on him. Yeah. I tried to do everything. Yeah. I, I too many plans. Mm -hmm. I didn't leave any room for God. And now they're leaving lots of room. And maybe there's a real lesson for us in this. Yeah. That maybe we need to walk six steps <laughs> yeah. and then stop mm -hmm. and take a breath that and say, Lord, Shall we move on yet? Shall we move on yet? Slowly, slowly. And notice that well, he'll not get ahead of God. And if there's any danger of him getting ahead of God, they stop and wait. Well, God catches up. <laughs> not that God's ever behind. But can you see? They were, scared. They were slowly, slowly. And it said, as the, as the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michal, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in, his, in her heart. She thought, what's going on? Crazy, what's going on? And you can probably find something like that. Maybe, in, you know, if you walked in some churches and started dancing, <laughs> you'd get, they'd be thinking, idiot. Yeah. They'd be thinking wrong, thick thoughts in the heart. Not realising that he just really, David was so on fire. Remember, right, David? Remember, David came uh, after Saul. And Saul was the anointed king. Saul was the king chosen by the people and God anointed him because the people chose him. But then God took his anointing of Saul and put it onto David. And David's bigger, biggest fear, and one of the Psalms, I couldn't tell you which one it is, it says, it might be 59, but it's a guess. Uh, 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 don't take your spirit away from me. I don't know if anybody knows which Psalm that's in. 51, is it? Thanks, Ken. Uh, don't take, you know, it, yeah, and it was, it, was when, it was when David was coming before God and, uh, and he was asking, is that the creating me a pure heart? Is that in the same one? Yeah. Creating me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. It's when David came before God at that time because he committed adultery with Bathsheba and he wanted, God, you know, forgive me. And he came in a real repentance, creating me a pure heart. And David, David now, he said, well, well don't, don't ever take your spirit. Don't ever leave me, Lord. And what happened? David thought God had left him. 
He were in bits. Couldn't take the couldn't take the He was wrecked. He doesn't tell us what David did for them three months while the ark of God. I can imagine he was on his face before God, fasting and praying and um, I, I could imagine, you know, he would be. You would, wouldn't you? If you're the anointed one of God and God's used you so mightily and all of a sudden this happens, you think, I've really upset God. <laughs> I've really upset God. Will you stop it? <laughs> Hallelujah. For those watching this video, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And he said he was leaping and, uh, and dancing and she despised him. And then in verse 17 he said, They brought the ark of the Lord and they set it in, in its place inside the tent that David had placed for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. He did not in any way want to get it wrong. Mm. He did not want to get it wrong. Hallelujah. And I run back to you, but sometimes in my walk, I, I haven't really seen God. I, I don't want to get it wrong. Nope. I don't. That's right. You know when when uh, we we looked a little while ago about Cain and Abel, didn't we? And God visited Cain, and He said to him, "Cain, sin is at the door of your life, and it desires to have you." And Jesus says, "Only in the Lord's prayer, pray this: lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil." It's a battle that we're in. It's a battle that we've got. And David understands all this. And he said, after he finished sacrificing the burnt offerings, fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. He blessed them. He gave them all a loaf of bread and cake of dates, he said, and cake of raisins to each person. Mm. And there were thousands of them. But they had a, a massive party. And everybody was blessed. Everybody. Amen. Everybody. Amen. Such is the anointing of God. And when the Holy Spirit comes, we're all, Jesus said, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Every one of us has God living in us. Every one of us. And then he said that all the crowds of Israelites, both men and women, and they all went to their homes. All blessed. And then said David returned home to bless his household. And then he, here comes uh, Michal, daughter of Saul. She came out to meet him. And she said, she said this, how the king of Israel has distinguished himself today. Going around half naked. In view. <laughs> In view of all these slave girls and the servants, yeah. what on earth did you think, you? What a vulgar fellow you looked. What do you think? What do you think? Why would you do such a thing? You're the king. David said to Michael, listen, and this is where it really comes round. You kind of got, in this little bit, what David says to Michael, you kind of you see the heart of David through this. Because David said this, listen, it was before the Lord. Yes, who chose me rather than your father. And he chose me rather than he chose anyone from your, from your father's house. And when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people, he, he appointed me. He said, this is why I will celebrate before the Lord. And I'll even become more undignified than this. <laughs> and I don't mind, I'll be humiliated in my own eyes, but by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honour. You see, when they, the slave girls, they saw the king dancing, you know, they thought, wow, Hallelujah. this is our king. And our king is worshipping the king of kings. Hallelujah. And the slave girls would have thought, wow, why would they be held? He would be held in honour because he showed them the way to find the king of kings. Yes. The God of Israel. Amen. He showed them, you can dance, you can sing, you can celebrate. In the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I think that the Holy Spirit wants us to come to that place where we can sing and we can dance. And we don't need to be ashamed. We don't need to be ashamed of the name of Jesus. No, praise the Lord. Jesus said, if you will proclaim my name before men, I'll proclaim your name before my Father in heaven. heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. So yes. I want to encourage you today. Yes. Hallelujah. We can sing. We can dance. And I don't know about you, but if you've got a box, Hallelujah. get rid of it. Yes. <laughs> Fill it. Yes. Fill it. Hallelujah. And invite the Holy Spirit into your life completely. Completely and wholly. And say, Lord God, I'm your box. <laughs> yes. Fill me with your presence. Mm. Fill me with your presence. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for your word. You, I want to thank you that you love us so much, oh God. 
Uh, God, uh, you speak so much to us in so many different ways. Thank you, Father. Father God, I just pray that whatever you speak to anyone in this room, anything at all, if it's from you, Father God, it's worth more than a million words from me. Mm. <laughs> whatever your words are, oh God, mm. would you encourage and would you bless, we give you our hearts, we give you our lives, you are our God. And Father, we thank you for our lives. We thank you, Father God, that you have a plan and you have a purpose. Hallelujah. And your word says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, we give you glory and honour. We want to pray that over us. We want to proclaim today, Lord, not by our own strength, not by our own wisdom, not by our own finances, not by our own provisions, not by our own health, oh God, not by any of that, oh God, but by your spirit, oh God. Do we want to worship you and praise you, oh God? Would you take us deeper? Would you take us across the other side, oh God? Would you encourage us and strengthen us and would you unite us together in the powerful name of Jesus? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord.